Uh, so over here, when it comes to dealing with the opposite gender, the the there are three. I think there, one of the brothers he mentioned it very nicely to me that as long as you maintain three, then that that relationship is permissible. As long as it is public, as long as it is as precise, and as long as it's purposeful. So if I'm talking to the opposite gender, but I'm just talking just for the sake of talking, then I should not be engaging in that conversation. Uh, there's nothing wrong with asking how somebody else is doing. Say, oh, how are you? Salaam alaikum. Right. So sometimes we'll be walking, giving salam to someone. There's no issue and there's no problem with that. Uh, if if there's a purpose, if I'm working with someone on a project, if I'm working with someone within a work environment, um, co cooperating with them on different things, there's a need, right? There's a purpose behind all of those conversations. As long as I'm doing those, then I have fulfilled all the guidelines, then I'm not doing anything impermissible. The only thing I need to gauge for myself is I need to make sure I am not flirting, right? And who decides who is flirting? I do, right? And this, is, I know exactly when I'm flirting with the opposite gender. And if I feel that I am doing that, then I need to control myself. If it's in a situation I can remove myself, I should remove myself. If it's in a situation where I can't, then I need to recheck my niyyah, I need to recheck my intention, and I need to bring it back, and I need to correct it, and I need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, how do I keep my close friends away from haram things such as drinking without being too bossy or veering them away? Um, my, my suggestion would be is <laughs> you might want to think about having new friends. And I know sometimes it's a, it's a difficult conversation to have, but if I'm surrounding myself with people who, who are drinking, if I'm surrounding myself with people who are doing drugs, then the possibility of me falling into that sin is greater than them changing to something that is better. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not possible that people don't change, but at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands me, He says that save yourselves and your families from your hellfire, he does not command me to save my friends, right? He doesn't command me to save, I, I'm not responsible for others. Everybody's an adult. Everybody makes independent decisions. I, I will attract the type of energy that I put out. If I put out positive energy, if I put out that I'm doing good, then the type of people that will around me will also be good. Uh, and it's important that I do that. I need to surround myself with people who are going to encourage me to do good. If I want to surround myself with people, I need to surround myself with people who are financially in a better position, people who are socially in a better position, people who are spiritually in a better position. And why do I need to do that? Because I want to be better, right? And I can't be better if I surround myself with people who are not at the same level as me, people who are lesser than me. We need to keep growing. We need to keep striving. We need to keep bettering ourselves. That's what we do as Muslims, right? This is, this is how we work and how we advance as individuals. If I surround myself with people who are talking about ideas, if I surround myself with people who are talking about improvement, if I, talk, if I surround myself with people who, who talk about things that will get them to a better place and to a better station, then it's going to motivate me to be better. But if I'm around people who just keep talking about how to be worse, if I surround myself with people who keep talking about how to rely on others, if I keep talking to people who, who keep talking about how to cheat the system, eventually what's going to happen to me? I'm going to learn how to cheat. I'm going to learn how to take advantage. I'm going to learn how to be weak. But this is not what we should be like, especially us as men. We have a responsibility. We have to learn how to be strong. And if I want to learn how to be strong, I need to be around other strong people. And, and part of strength and part of weakness, like just be, we might be strong in so, certain things, we might be weak in other things, right? Like we have to understand that even these things can be compartmentalized. But if there's somebody who I know to be spiritually stronger than me, then I should try to be like that person. If there's somebody who's financially stronger than me, I should try to be like that person. If there's somebody who's socially stronger than me, I should try to be like that person because we need to strive to improve. And if I keep surrounding myself with weakness, then guess what's going to happen? I'm going to end up being weak too. And I, I'm sure some of you might be familiar with the statement, but it's, uh, uh, was it, weak men create hard times, right? Uh, weak men create hard times, right? And, uh-huh, oh, yeah, 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 so, oh, yeah, it, that's, uh, that's a nice one too, man. You're, you're average, you're an average of the people around you. So the higher I make that average, the higher I will be. And that's what we should strive to be. That's what we should strive to work for. And if we, if we look back, even in our Islamic history, the companions, did they only strive to be around each other? No. They strove to be around who? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, huh? Uh-huh.
المؤمن مرعه الاخي right there's a lot man like على الدين خليلي right there's a, there's a lot of uh, hadith you know that that definitely support this idea and this concept like we have to be around good people in in subhanallah i i always found it amazing that you know one of the descriptions is that your brother is your mirror and, and if we think about why do i use a mirror right i use a mirror to see the to see the flaws right i don't use a mirror to um to, to make myself look better. If I want to look better, what do I use? I use my phone, right? I use my phone, I turn on all the filters, like it'll smooth everything. Guess what a mirror is, a mirror is not going to do? It's not going to do any of those things. It's going to show me all my blemishes, it's going to show me all my scars, and it's the same thing with friends. But those friends, it's not those blemishes and scars that they're looking at. They'll say, they're going to show me when I'm not being courageous. They're going to show me when I'm not being truthful. They're going to show me when I'm not being honest, and they're going to show me when I'm not being upright. That, that's what a friend does. Those are the, the character blemishes that I have. That is what a true friend points out. Well, man, you, you said this. You shouldn't have said this like that. That wasn't a good way to say that, man. Like, I, I, th I, think, I think you might have hurt his feelings. I think you might have done this. I think you might... It, this is what a friend is. A friend isn't someone who just claps for you. Every time you say something, he's like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you know, you tell him. That's not a friend. That's not a friend at all. That's someone who's just validating because he himself is probably looking for validation. Everything he does, you clap for him, and everything you do, he claps for you. Tfadal, yaqi. Of course. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Sure. E excellent. Excellent question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this was a general question in the specific context of seeking a spouse, right? Th this, this is a different context that we have there. In, in the context, what is my purpose? My purpose isn't work, right? My purpose isn't education. My purpose isn't a project. My purpose isn't a, a service, you know, uh, maybe this person is a concierge and I'm looking how, like, okay, I'm going to ask her, okay, what is the best restaurant in the area, right? These are different services that are provided and this is different ways to engage. How do I engage the opposite gender when I'm looking to get married? It depends on the setting. Uh, there are different ways to do that. Sometimes there are apps, sometimes in person, sometimes it could be through websites, sometimes it could be through third parties, sometimes it can be through family. All of these different means and all of these different ways are ways to engage with, with that person. Sit down, what are the things that you talk about? If I'm spending all my time flirting with that person, is that going to get me marriage? It's going to get me a girlfriend. It's not going to get me a marriage. I'm telling you, it's not going to get me a wife. Why? Because with my wife, I talk about ideas. I talk about goals. I talk about I, you know, the things that we want to do with our life. I'm not talking about how beautiful she is. I'm not talking about oh, how she makes me feel. All of those things are not going to help when it comes to finding a wife. Those are things that might be playful talk, right? But there's a, there's a big difference between me looking for a wife and me looking for a girlfriend. And if I'm just looking for that, she's just seeking attention, and that might not be the person that I want to look for in a wife. It might not be the characteristics I want to look for in a wife. So we really need to ask ourselves, if I'm just doing that, if every woman I'm engaging with, all I'm doing is flirting with her, and I've now sat with 10 women, I've now sat with 15 women, I really need to check my intention in, in my filtration process, I had because I had uh, a number of brothers. They've had the same problem, and I'm, I'm just being very honest. I had a number of brothers that come to me, Sheikh, you know, I'm having trouble finding a girl. Like, how do I talk to a girl, or what do I do this? I'm like, well, what, what are you looking for? I said, what kind of timelines are you putting? Timelines? Like, what do you, what do you mean? I was like, are you, how, how soon are you looking to get married? And if, you, if you're telling me a year, two years, why are you looking today? It doesn't make any sense. If you're looking a year from now, if you want to get married a year from now, then, then look in six to eight months. Why would you look today? You're just going to emotionally involve yourself with this person. And all of the conditions you had, because you're blinded by her beauty, because you're blinded by the relationship, you're not going to make cognizant decisions. You're just going to make emotionally clouded ones. And these are not ways for a person to find a spouse and to find a wife. You know, what kind of timelines? Within the first two weeks, I'm, and I'm being very honest, within the first two weeks, I should determine is this person a white, is this person spousal material or not? As, as, a, as a man or a woman? Is this person worthy engaging or not? Should, should I pursue this or not? And after, if once the two-week line is up and is like, I, I, don't, I don't know, that's it, cut it off, go look somewhere else. It's, it's not necessary to get caught up with every single relationship. And that way, I'm not wasting my time, I'm not wasting that person's time. And if we want to talk about oh, why is there pain, why is there heartache, because we allow these relationships to go on for too long. And we, why is that? Because I need to check my intention. Am I enjoying the conversation? Am I enjoying the attention? Am I enjoying engaging with this person? 
or is my goal actually to, to build a life and to be married to this person who I'm talking to? And, th and that's a tough conversation to have because I, I actually have to critique myself and I have to look at my emotions, I have to look at my involvement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر